just batshit crazy. We're all uh, mentally unstable and uh, we're prone to just cut our ears off at any minute. but they're still gonna have those views. You can't like, necessarily like change their views on the spot. You, so you just kinda have to like accept that they're they're that kind of person. And just like I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's good to like just be around people who have different views from you. It doesn't necessarily mean it's like bad or good, but I think it's like good just to like get a different perspective on things. Like I can accept that we all come from different backgrounds, we all have different ideas of what art should be and what we want our art to be. Like just because I want my art to be this way doesn't mean I have to impose that view on another artist. I would say it would be only really hard if that other person was not as accepting and was just like, no, this is this is how art is, it's my way, and it's nothing else is good. Personally, I don't have a problem with how our artists operate. I mean, we, we get different levels, but then we come collectively together because we're all professionals and we actually talk out the pieces. And if they want to introduce an idea to me, I'm willing I like this work, I don't like this work, it's just you come to resolve and you just professionally analyze the piece the best that you can and then give feedback and criticism in the most appropriate way possible. Mm -hmm. That's the art kid in like elementary school or something, or being like known as like the art person in my family um it was kind of like an outlet that i would use but not like it was like something that just came to me natural like i felt like it was natural doing stuff like i remember even even when i was little i was like i want to draw i'm going to draw a calendar with all the pictures and i would do like all these freaking things when i was little and drawing was just like something that felt good to do well my second choice from like doing like illustration or art in general was to go to like into uh, embalming people, like morticianing stuff. Like I thought that would be nice. Going to a funeral house, fix people up. That was my second choice. I I was a philosophy major before I came here, but I you know that's as useless as art. <laughs> so I know writer was definitely um, was definitely a big um, contender for like uh, another another field. Um, I was little, I wanted to be a vet, um, and then I realized you had to like take blood from animals and, <laughs> and like deal with like surgeries. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not about that life. So art, art and writing were kind of like my my main field of choice. Like stuff that I would watch when I was little, and that kind of pushed me into that direction. Where it's like, oh yeah, like I can, I kind of want to do this too. I really like this feeling of like being inspired by these other people who obviously really care about their craft, and I want to kind of pass that down to like people like me who kind of want to find like some sort of like meaning that sounds really deep <laughs> like some sort of like meaning or some sort of some sort of purpose to art that will make them feel good about themselves or make other people feel good and you know, I sat down and I've always I've always drawn since high school so out of high school I went to try C for a couple of years and I met uh, some amazing teachers that kind of taught me and kind of like molded me the way I still paint today, so that was like seven, eight years ago. So since then I've just continued. I was called the copier because I was able to see like a cartoon or something and just copy down a piece of paper. And I think just uh, my parents helping me, you know, enroll in art classes helped me sort of evolve my skill. Finished completely. I think 
every time I look at a painting, I see things that need to be, uh, you know, further touched up on. So, always. Everything in here is flux, so they're in a state of changing. And um, the most important thing, um, as far as being happy with something, is to just keep, have, um, don't be hesitant to change and to, and through change leads to progression. I think that that's always a hard thing for artists. I'm very curious about other people, so like right now the series of work that I'm working on is I paint other people's private stuff, toiletries, and their, you know, um, laundries, in the in the toilets. <laughs> Topic that I want to uh, learn about, I will read on it, try to fit it within my cosmos of how I want to um, present work or what I want to talk about. So, like, I talk a lot about imperialism and, and, and the idea of, of another country colonizing another. Country. Uh, it was my one final, and. Um... I liked it enough to go back into it because I want to print it out to keep as a portfolio piece. Um, this is uh, my drawing final. This is just um, kind of like sort of a recreation of a piece that I did earlier in the year with ink. I did it really small, like really tiny, but I made it really small so you had to go in and look at it. And the professor asked me, like, do you think this would be different if it was huge? And I was like, I don't know, I never thought about it. I guess it would be. It would be kind of different. It takes away that intimacy. It takes away that privacy you have with um, the smaller piece. So when he gave us this project where it's like draw a life-size human portrait, I was like, okay, well, let's see <laughs> how, how different like that will feel. Punch a piece of art, huh? <laughs> what would I punch specifically? What would I punch? Hmm. Um. You know, you think you would know what you want to punch. Probably the Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody hear about it. It'd be amazing. I don't know why the Mona Lisa keeps popping in my head, but <laughs> I guess I would punch the Mona Lisa. Maybe it's because it's too perfect. It just needs a hole somewhere. I just... I don't know why. 